Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome back to the PyBytes YouTube channel. And as promised last week, I would do a Django debug toolbar video. So uh, let's demo the tool and look at some really cool features that can help you debug your code better, profile it even as a Django developer. Hope you enjoy and that this is useful for you. So here I am on the debug Django debug toolbar installation page. So you will have to pip install it into your virtual environment. And let's quickly run through the prerequisites and the steps, right? So you need to have static files in your installed apps. You need to have your static URL set up correctly. You also need to have um, Django templates in your templates constant. That's all in settings.py. And then you also need to add debug toolbar to your installed apps. As the last two steps, you also need to add the debug path to your URLs. And I usually do an if around it to only do that if I'm in debug mode. And you need to also add the middleware. So instead of running through the steps one by one on a new project, which might be a bit boring, let's just uh, look at PyBytes Books, uh, which is a project on our open source repo. Contributions are welcome. So it's this project. And it's this website in production. And we actually use it uh, every week to track our books. We even have a reading list for our podcast. So if you go through the list, there's a PyBytes podcast reading list. And it's all the books we have mentioned on the show. Anyway, so let me see if I'm in line with that setup I just described. So here I broke down the apps a little bit by um, type, uh, but basically it's the same because I didn't add them together at the end. But yeah, I have it under external apps. I have the middleware. Notice this warning as well in the setup that the order matters. Include the middleware as early as possible. However, it must come after any other middleware that encodes the response content, such as gzip middleware. And that's why I had it after white noise. I think that was definitely needed. I got the template set up. I got a static settings as well. And in URLs, in the main project URLs, I have this if. So if settings debug, then import the debug toolbar and then add the debug endpoint to my URLs pattern. So I typically don't want this in production. And so I have this if. And I think that's it. Yeah, that's it for settings. Uh, now, last week I did have an issue that the toolbar was not shown up, but I was just quickly testing it in another app and I didn't have a full HTML. So what I learned then is that the debug toolbar is actually injected into the body tag. So you do need a full HTML template for this to work. All right, let's look at it, right? So I have my run server already running. So this is the remote app. This is the local app. And here on the right, you see the debug toolbar. Now, by default, it comes with a lot of panels. Um, but for the purpose of uh, this video, I also added profiling and history, and a few more. But mostly, this is what you should see. So now we'll just um, detail a couple of features I use the most. So I'm mostly interested in SQL, right? So if I go into a book, I want to see how many, or on any page on this in this app for that matter, I want to see how many queries got executed. And if you click on this SQL panel, you see exactly what the uh, the uh, SQL queries were that were executed to render the content on this page. So there was a query to the books table, a query to the user books table, category table was queried, and also book notes. Uh, so there's a few uh, queries going, going on. But so far, these are unique queries. On the other hand, if I go to the reading lists, there are 24 queries for a single table, which is a bit suspicious. And here I start to see the n plus 1 problem, which I spoke about last week, a video linked uh, here. 
And there's some duplicated queries. So that's probably something I want to um, optimize and look into. So that's interesting, right? Um, let's look at templates. So this is a view. It renders a template. And I can see what got sent into the template. So here I see this view rendered the list, user list, list template, which inherited from the base template because all the templates inherit from the base template, which has the central theming. But I can also see what got sent into the template, which is interesting. So I had a couple of variables here uh, from the view that I'm using in the template. So that's useful information. And that's it. And what I also really find interesting is, um, I actually learned that today. I've not used it that much, but the debug toolbar has profiling embedded. So if I go click on profiling and notice that that doesn't come by default. So um, I actually listed out all the panes or panels explicitly, and I had to add the profiling panel uh, manually. It's not there by default. So if I don't specify this list and save, now the run server refreshes. Well, actually, then nothing shows because just having this variable, um, the toolbar is going to look for what you explicitly give it, right? So if I remove the panel, the variable altogether, then you see what it comes with uh, by default. So actually, history is there. Profiling as well. So maybe there's some caching going on. Yeah. So I didn't expect the profiling to be there. So if that's the case, then even better, right? Then we don't even have to use this variable. But just that you know, you can uh, list them explicitly. So you could also remove some of them uh, that you're not interested in, and then it might be faster as well, right? So you have that full control. Um, so yeah, let's just go with not listing it and refresh. And I wanted to show the profiling thing and specifically on a book page. So for example, I go to Python and I go to a book I probably have not rendered before, not in this database, not locally. Or maybe I did. It's pretty fast, actually. So let me, let me make sure I take some really unique book I've not seen before. So maybe Anna Karenina. I don't think I've visited that page. So there's a slight delay. And I know that um, because I know how the, work, the app works. But that's actually um, the app reaching out to the Google Books API to get this data, right? But if you would not know that and you're suspecting that, hey, you're wondering, like, why is this page slow? You can click on profiling and you see exactly the whole stack of calls. Um, and actually, the googlebooks.py module with the get books, get book info function, that took like 371 milliseconds, so almost half a second. Yeah, so it's, it's a bit slow, right? This should ideally be milliseconds. So I can actually dive in, go to this module, go to this function, and see what happens. So let's actually do that. And that's the uh, get book info. It's right here. And yeah, not surprisingly, uh, cache book info in DB. So it retrieves the book info from cache, but if it's not in cache, um, so if it's in cache, it returns to cache data. If it's not in cache, it's going to get book info from API. I'm really happy with this naming, by the way, because I can just read it uh, after years and I actually immediately know what, what this is doing. So this call, I suspect, is a bit slower because that's making, um, you can actually do leader G. Oh, and it's defined right below. So my Vim shortcuts, I've discussed this in this video, might be useful. Um, and here you see a request get, right? So here it's making a, a call over the network. Now, the book at this point is now cached in the database. By the way, I will do a video on caching. I think it's fascinating and very important uh, for you to know. So if I now refresh the page, that's instant, right? Because now instead of going over the network to retrieve this data, it gets it from the database. So now if I click on profiling, uh, this, yeah, this, uh, this function took, um, 
one tenth of the time instead of 300 or almost 400 milliseconds it was now 40 milliseconds so yeah you can see that this pro this embedded profiling can be very useful when you're kind of wondering why your page is slow and if it's not is already related to sql query so if you don't have a lot of if you don't hit the n plus one problem um so this is all fine there can still be other slowness and then the profiling tab can be very useful if you have other use cases please comment below as well as uh, what you learned or other things you want to see hope this uh, gets you started with the django debug toolbar uh, antonio malay also listed it as one of his favorite plugins you can listen to my interview with him here and yeah if you want to see more django content as well let me know happy to produce it and uh yeah install this plugin if not done already as a django developer it's really a must-have and it will make your work a lot easier all right thanks for watching and uh we'll be back tomorrow with another video cheers